In any other presidency, we would be talking about this for months. And um, they would have started the hearings already. Uh, and I mean, and of course, I'm talking about the Donald Trump's relationship uh, with China. And it's really not so much his relationship with China as it is to his relationship to his ability to make money. If Barack Obama had tweeted out last Sunday as president of the United States, uh, the Chinese company ZTE, this is a Chinese telecom company owned by, I think, I don't know, 30% by the Chinese government. Um, if Barack Obama had tweeted out, real shame about ZTE having all these problems, having to shut down, a lot of jobs lost, told the Commerce Department to get on it and get them their jobs back, essentially. I mean, it just ne <laughs> never mind with any of the backstory <laughs> behind it. Just the, the idea that if Barack Obama had said anything remotely close to that, um, the, 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 how apocalyptic our society would become. <laughs> Is is really is honestly I, I it's it's beyond the imagination. Now, if you realize that the reason why ZTE was having problems with jobs is because that very same Commerce Department that Donald Trump had tasked with fixing it or selling salvaging their jobs, that very same Commerce Department had put uh, restrictions on ZTE because they had broken the embargo with Iran and I believe North Korea. Mm -hmm. They also um, were found by our intelligence agencies to be uh, installing things in the supply chain of phones that make their way into American hands. Um, basically mechanisms for which um, the these phones could be hacked and tracked um across the board i mean they had been this was a punishment from the commerce department that's why this company went under uh and why these jobs were lost is because it was literally a punishment or a warning uh, like we can't deal with these people there's a real problem here <laughs> uh and then and then that's not even the, 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 the craziest part of the story. I'll let you take it from here uh, because it was revealed that there was another element, another like the backstory to the backstory. Well, I mean, this is, you know, as you point out, the, the, you know, had anyone else done this, it would have been. Well, I mean, just think just one word, Benghazi. OK, I mean, right. imagine this sort of thing having or, happened. Um, uranium one. Uranium right? one. I mean, yeah. I mean, this stuff. It would have been wild. We'd have been having hearings. They'd they'd have him, you know, up there on the on the hill. I mean, it would. They'd have a new special prosecutor already. I mean, that would yep. have been that would have happened. But and but I mean, even even more amazing is the fact that it's Donald Trump who ran his campaign. The only people he, you know, bashed more than the Chinese were the Mexicans. I mean, this was a fundamental part of his campaign was that China was taking advantage. They were, you know, they, they had, they had, they were raping America, he said, and that, uh, you know, he was going to, going to get to the bottom of it. Just a month ago, he instituted a bunch of tariffs on, you know, Chinese goods. And there's been this back and forth. There's a trade negotiation, you know, quote, negotiation going on. Um, in trying to, you know, fix his sort of, you know, demand for this, uh, for these tariffs, which of course China has retaliated, and now Trump voters are suffering in the Midwest because they export. You know, Trump doesn't understand exporting. That's a, that's a whole concept he's never heard of. In any case, that that will, he put out this tweet on Sunday, and everybody, myself included, I'm going. What the hell was this? And we're all tweeting back and forth going, what's he talking about? What's going on here? What is this? And nobody knew. I mean, this was weird. The administration didn't know. Larry Kudlow didn't know. Wilbur Ross, who'd been the guy who put the, the original uh, punishment down. And, and by the way, just going back, they had not only been punished for um, violating those sanctions, they had violated them and then done it again after making another agreement. So they were doubly guilty in this sense. 
and they had been banned for seven years. I mean, it's, you know, and yeah, that probably was going to take down their company, although they had plenty of, you know, support from the Chinese government, so who knows right. what that's all about. But in any case, you know, everybody's going, what is going on here? And Trump, in his tweet, he says, I've informed the Commerce Department to take care of it, and blah, blah, blah. Nobody knows what it is. Well, then suddenly, I think it was Agence Press the reported, oh, by the way, 72 hours before he sent that tweet, the Chinese government had inked a deal, or a company run by the Chinese government, had inked a deal to uh, make a $500 million investment in a Trump property in Indonesia. And suddenly, all the pieces start to fall into place, right? You know, you're and going, let me add, $500, $500 million investment, and then Chinese banks, which don't do anything without the permission of the Chinese government, was going to loan an additional five hundred million dollars. Right. Sorry, right. go Suddenly ahead. Suddenly, this big, this big, and this is a big project in Indonesia, and they had inked the deal in twenty fifteen during the campaign. Um, but it was one of those deals where you know when Trump allegedly uh, turned over his, his the reins to his boys and said there will be no new deals. This one was considered to be pre-existing, although they hadn't even broken ground and there was nothing really there. There had been no, it wasn't as if they put any money into it. Right. Um, so at that point, you know, they, they had, he had at, at, he invited his partner to the inauguration, his Indonesian partner. They met at Trump Tower, had a big meeting, you know, one of those fates that they had throughout the transition. Uh, until somebody said, hey, you know, you might want to keep these under wraps because it doesn't really look that good that you're meeting with your business partners as president-elect. Um, this was a big, big project, and it means a lot of money to the Trump organization. And suddenly, in the midst of what they're calling trade negotiations between China and the United States, in the midst of this you know, bromance, allegedly, between Xi and Trump, out of the blue comes this, this, you know, reversal on an American policy that was, by the way, very important to, to Xi. And I think we can figure out why, because it's basically an espionage. <laughs> it's an espionage technology that he really wants to keep yep. going. And Trump just, you know, he agrees to it. Now, well, no one should be surprised by this. This is Trump's method. He has said it from the very beginning. You do something nice for me, I'll do something nice for you. He said about Putin, hey, he called me a genius. So I like him. You know, that, that's how he thinks. So if, if G mentions to Trump or through some intermediary, by the way, you know, I don't know if you heard, but of course he had, that the, uh, you know, we've loosened up a billion dollars for that project in Indonesia. How would you think about that? And oh, and by the way, we really, ZTE is really an important thing to us. And then Trump just goes and does it. And he did it without letting anybody know. I mean, that's part of the thing here. It's kind of hard to believe that this was some, um, you know, clever negotiating ploy in the trade negotiations when Trump didn't say a word to anybody. He just did it. Yep. He went out there, did the tweet. And by the way, the Commerce Department is doing this. <laughs> they're follow what they're else following are they gonna orders. Do? Of course. Uh, it's, it's, it's a stunning, it's a stunning story Unbelievable. and it's almost too hard to sort of like absorb the idea that he could be this crass and it would be so blatant but even if there is no quid pro quo it is still <laughs> highly problematic that the same entity the chinese government is um on one hand benefiting uh in the zte case and then on the other hand um providing massive benefit to the Trump organization on the other. Even if there was not coordinated, this is highly problematic. Uh, but we got to take a quick break, uh, Digby. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about how Donald Trump is uh, destroying the federal government and uh, where the latest is on the, the various investigations surrounding Trump, Inc. We'll be right back. I'm Sam Cedar. This is Ring of Fire Radio. <laughs> 